Thank you very much, Sachin. Uh, I'm from Jaipur and Rajasthan, and we are talking about the Sachin at nauseum these days, Sachin Pilot. Uh, but I must say that you've done a much better job than the Sachin Pilot. You've got some mm -hmm. fantastic people together for this uh, for this meeting. The top people in the country, uh, uh, Anuva did a great job, Sham, Kumar, Ullas, these are, you know, if you ask for top people, lung cancer experts in the country, these are the names you would get. So let's talk about lung cancer. Now it's my privilege to summarize the discussion of the day. Uh, lung cancer is the commonest single organ cancer which is there in the world, particularly in our country, highest mortality. We desperately need new approaches and new treatments for the disease. Uh, and I remember uh, 30 years back, uh, or maybe more when I started oncology, Sham would relate with me, Colonel Rangara would relate with me. Most of our non-small cell lung cancers would survive for eight or 10 months. And it would be an unusual patient who went beyond a year. And now at least half of our patients to two years. So major massive improvement has happened in the lung cancer field. And this is uh, uh, partly because our labs are much better now. We have uh, NGS available at reasonably affordable costs, quick turnaround times. In a couple of weeks, we have, have NGS report now. And earlier when we were when we had only non-small cell and small cell lung cancers, now we have a whole bunch of lung cancers. Primarily, we are dividing patients who have a treatable mutation versus who don't have a treatable mutation. And in addition to EGFR and ALK, uh, which used to be the just the two mutations which we would look for, we are now looking for a host of other mutations. And we have targets for these mutations also, like the sort, sort of un, untargetable mutations like BRAF, MET. They now also have studies going on in which we are exploring uh, uh, targeted therapies for them. And for the conventional targets, the GFR and the AL, we have first generation, second generation, third generation drugs now. We are combining TKIs with VEGF inhibitors. We are combining TKIs with the chemotherapy with incremental benefit. Uh, patients who don't have targetable mutations, we had reached a plateau with chemo several years back, but now we are adding to that with our immunotherapies and the checkpoint inhibitors. Checkpoint inhibitors are being studied in the new adjuvant setting, already approved in the adjuvant setting, like Rolimab is approved. And then in the palliative care setting, you have only checkpoint inhibitors. You have checkpoint inhibitors in combination with chemo. You have uh, two checkpoint inhibitors in combination. You have checkpoint inhibitors in first line, second line, third line. And, and a 10 to 15% of patients are now you know, living up to five years. Very recently, a paper at Weber was published with five years data with uh, checkpoint inhibitors. So, so incredible amount of progress is happening. Unfortunately, uh, most of the expensive drugs, most of the progress is out of reach of the majority of our patients. So efforts towards uh, screening, early detection, sending the patient to surgery when the patient still has an operable lung cancer is important. And I'd like to end with uh, the holy grail of every oncologist across specialties. All of us should make an effort towards prevention of lung cancer and towards the anti-smoking, uh, uh, you know, campaign. Each one of the us in our own way should contribute to that. That should be one of our primary games, primary prevention of lung cancer. So with that, I thank you very much again for getting together a wonderful program. I really, really enjoyed myself. Major gain in knowledge, back to you.